More bebop. Three great bebop licks and how to apply them. Apply to gain great flexibility. Using bebop licks when you improvise is a must. It almost does not matter what music style you are playing. The bebop language is so versatile and still so hip. Get into these three most flexible bebop licks and add these to your vocabulary right now in any style. In this tutorial, why is it so very important to learn bebop licks? How do I apply bebop licks to my playing? Dominant 7 bebop lick, the pivot, bebop arpeggio, 3 of the greatest bebop licks and 100 and plus ways to practice and use them. Show, play and analyze a short solo on Yardbirds Suite. Hi, I'm Sam Balagor and welcome to Sam Balagor's Saxophone Lessons. I would really appreciate it if you would give me a big fat like down there and you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Why is it very important to learn bebop licks? The bebop language is a very important fundamental part of jazz language. Not only does the bebop language describe a way to use certain diatonic and chromatic notes in music, but maybe more importantly as a way to play rhythm in a certain exciting way. Bebop demands a strong knowledge of your notes and your rhythms. The influence of bebop in improvised music has added a much stronger focus on putting the target notes on the beat, but also on the offbeat. How do I apply bebop licks to my playing? To apply bebop licks to your playing, it's important to learn the musical line first. At the same time, you should really focus on the rhythm and the placement of the notes. In this example I play the G major 7 arpeggio as an upper structure of E minor 9. From the B I move the line down because this gives an unexpected melody line. Also I give the F sharp an accent because it's the highest placed note in the first half of the bar and is on the offbeat. The next half of bar 1 I play the G triad up with a chromatic approach note, the F sharp. I change the rhythm from 8 notes to triplets. One of the highest note, the D, I give a clear accent. The B and the D are surrounding notes of the C sharp of the A7. Here I use the chromatic approach note between the root and the 7th on the dominant chord, in this case the G sharp. The end on the end is also a very clear bebop trade, putting the important notes on the off beat. The pivot lick, how you can use this. Instead of exercise, 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 I'm starting with how you can use this. In my example above, I played a G major 7 chord. Normally, the G major would look like this. Plain up the arpeggio. But to make it much more interesting to listen to, you take a part of the line one octave down, this is a very common to do on arpeggios in bebop. I'm of course playing the E minor chord, but as an upper structure I use the G major 7 arpeggio. Taking this through the scale of D major, starting on what I would play on a D major 9. In this way you get a much more exciting line than the common arpeggio up. You also add the possibility to stay within the reach of your instrument. When you get high you can move it low. Another very cool thing is you get a second actuated guide tone line lower than your normal begin tone. In this example... So I connect these two B's low. Connect the B's. It sounds very natural. There are tons of ways to train your pivots in the scale, but most importantly is to add these to your playing. Add the pivot, moving the chord line down. When you plan an arpeggio up, think, maybe you can use a pivot. To practice this, and get this info into your fingers. Take this through any scale like this. Great exercise. 
you should really try it. Dominant 7 bebop lick. You have now seen a couple of examples how to use dominant bebop notes. <laughs> Another example is this. Those bebop notes. The chromatic bebop note on the dominant is between the root and the 7 on the dominant chord. On the A7, the chromatic bebop note is the A flat, going from A to A flat to G. I call it out as an A-flat because in the examples I have made, the line is going from A down to G. So the A-flat leading to the G is most logical. If you were leading towards the A from the G, you should have a G-sharp. But I use the A-flat because I'm leading down to the G. The chromatic bebop note is added to the scale to get both the root and the seventh on the beat when playing the scale. You can see both the A, the root of the A7, and the G, the seventh of the A7, is landing on the beat. When you add this to the dominant, the A7 dominant scale, you see that you hit all the chord notes right on this beat. One more time. One, two, three, four, one. You have them all on the beats. When you begin the scale on the beat, you always have the chord notes on the beat. Same, same, same. I start the chord notes on the beat on the one, and I just go through the scale adding the chromatic bebop note on the dominant. Even if you play the scale in smaller parts, you can add this chromatic dominant note between the root and the seventh. You can also see this in the examples earlier in this video. I'm adding the bebop note, not the whole scale, but just a part of this little part of this bebop stuff. Train the chromatic bebop note. Play the scales as shown before. Also try with shorter runs of the scale. Makes you more flexible. For example, this. And there you see the G sharp going up to the A. Experiment with the length of the lines and play both up and down. The bebop arpeggio. There are of course hundreds of ways to play your arpeggios. I picked this one because it's very versatile and describes the bebop language very very well. First of all, it's an arpeggio and it changes the rhythm from 8 notes to triplets. The arpeggio pattern also had a chromatic approach note in front of it. The F sharp to the G. The arpeggio is easy to play on all chords and you can put it anywhere in any jazz line. I like the changing of the rhythm because it spices things up a bit. You do not start on the heavy beat. This makes it a little bit more light, the line. Another really nice thing about the arpeggio is that you can put it into your music in many ways. If you put it in a line on the bar, you can go further on the E minor arpeggio. If you put a chromatic approach note before the bar, you can add much more E minor. And when you put the E minor line at the end of the bar, you get great leading material to the next bar. At the end of the bar. There are so many uses of this chord. If you look beyond the minor chord, you will find that you can fit this into all chords. Checking out these jazz lines, you'll see you cover the whole scale. You have the D minor, the E minor, the F sharp minor, the G major, the A7, the B minor 7, and the C sharp half diminished 7. The D major, E minor, F sharp minor, G major, A7, B minor, C sharp half diminished. But you can also work this out as an upper structure of the following chords. Look at the red markings below. Those are the upper structures. The B minor. B minor 9. The C sharp half diminished 9. The D major 9. 
the E minor, the F sharp minor 9, G major 9, the A9. Also remember to play these from the upbeat of each bar. One, two, three. Three of the greatest bebop licks, 100 ways to practice and apply these, transposed into seven keys. There are so many ways you can use your bebop language in your playing. In this manual, I have focused on three licks, working them out in smaller licks, one bar licks, longer lines and exercises. From the one lick there are developed exercises how to play this in your chords and your scale. There are many different examples on how you can use this lick on different chord progressions and in different rhythmic settings placing this differently in the bar. If you're already working on improvisation this is a really great setup in adding more vocabulary to your playing. The licks and the lines will probably also fit directly into what you're already playing and you can use it at add-ons. Find the manual link in the description below. Play a chromatic approach to the triplets, the F sharp minor triad arpeggio up going down the D major scale, playing the B flat major 7 chord up as an upper structure to the G minor 9, running down the scale of C7. Up the A minor 7 chord on the D7, adding a bit of scale, going down the G minor triad on C7. Playing chromatically between the 7th and the 5th on the B7, jumping to the flat 9 down the scale. Chromatic lines between the 3rd and the 5th on the E7, and again between the 7th and the 9th. A chromatic approach note to the E minor 9 arpeggio on the A7 going down that scale. Down the F sharp minor 7 arpeggio hitting the 3rd of the B7 jumping to the flat 9. Down the E minor triad playing the flat 9 flat 10 extension on the A7. Do you want more bebop? Check this, I've made more videos about the bebop. More legs, more ways to get around the bebop language. Feel free to check these videos, how to use bebop chromatic surrounding notes and how to use chromatic approach notes playing great jazz lines. See the links beneath. Comments and compliments are of course welcome. Write them in the comment section below and I will get back to you. Questions? Of course. Post them there. Share and like if you like. This is really appreciated. All the links mentioned in this video are available below in the description. Play music, have fun.